The 22 Pacific Island countries and territories have an extraordinary dependence on fish for food security and economic development. Climate change threatens to disrupt these benefits. This short video explains the importance of fish to Pacific Island people, the problems that ocean warming will cause for communities and economies, and the adaptations needed to minimize the impacts. Traditionally, much of the fish used to feed Pacific Island people has come from coral reefs. Other locally caught seafood includes tuna from near shore waters and shellfish from a range of coastal habitats. Fish provides Pacific Island coastal communities with 50 to 90 percent of their dietary animal protein, and fish consumption in the region is often two to five times the global average. The many benefits of fish consumption are now widely recognized. Children who eat fish have improved brain development, and the micronutrients in fish prevent malnutrition. Public health experts recommend that Pacific Island people should eat at least 35 kilograms of fish per person per year. But a challenge now facing many Pacific Island countries and territories is that there is a gap in fish supply. The amount of fish needed by growing populations now exceeds sustainable harvests from coral reefs. The gap in fish supply is not only due to human population growth, higher fishing pressure in coastal waters, and degradation of fish habitats due to runoff and pollution from poorly planned land use have also reduced the number of fish. In many parts of the region, the amount of fish available per person is now below recommended levels. Seven Pacific Island countries and territories already have a gap in fish supply. By 2035, even more countries and territories will be in this category. Climate change is exacerbating this problem. Ocean warming and acidification are already damaging coral reefs and reducing the number of fish they can support. By 2050, large-scale losses of coral reefs are expected even under low greenhouse gas emissions, with coral being replaced by seaweed. Degradation of coral reefs due to climate change will increase the gap in fish supply. The good news is that the rich tuna resources of the region can be used to fill the gap. The most effective way to assist coastal communities to catch tuna is to install fish aggregating devices, commonly known as FADs, in nearshore waters. Communities can then be trained to fish safely and effectively around FADs. To meet the increasing demand for tuna from coastal communities, FADs need to become part of the national infrastructure for food security. For urban communities, another option is available. Greater access to fish can be provided by improving the sale and distribution of the smaller tuna caught by industrial fishing vessels. However, to maximize the potential food security benefits available from these fish, better market facilities are needed. Support is also needed for small and medium enterprises to deliver the fish to peri-urban areas. Industrial tuna fishing is vital to the economic development of many Pacific Island countries and territories. For example, revenue earned from tuna fishing access fees contributes to the cost of providing education, operating hospitals and building infrastructure. Ten Pacific Island countries and territories derive an average of 37% of their government revenue from tuna fishing access fees. Climate change also threatens to disrupt these important economic benefits. Continued high greenhouse gas emissions are expected to cause tuna to move to the east, reducing the annual catch from the waters of the ten countries and territories 
by 20% by 2050 and revenue from access fees by $90 million a year. If greenhouse gas emissions can be limited to moderate levels, the annual tuna catch is estimated to decrease by only 3% and revenue by $12 million. The Pacific Island economies are not responsible for climate-driven redistribution of tuna. Their greenhouse gas emissions have been trivial. In contrast, the distant water fishing nations operating in their waters have produced 60% of historical emissions. This is a significant loss and damage issue. Like all loss and damage issues, the consequences of tuna redistribution for Pacific Island economies can be addressed by limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees in line with the Paris Agreement. Another pathway involves empowering Pacific Island countries to negotiate internationally to retain the benefits they receive from tuna regardless of the redistribution of fish. To strengthen these negotiations, an advanced warning system is needed to reduce uncertainty in the timing and extent of tuna redistribution and the true cost to Pacific Island economies of the fish moving out of their waters. Further information on these impacts of climate change is available here.